Welcome everybody, my name is John Wally and you found yourself right in the middle of a web build series for installing WordPress and Apache all in Ubuntu 18.04. So today we're going to be installing WordPress. It is the day. We've had four previous episodes here and we've been building up, building up to this moment when we install WordPress. So I promise you by the end of the day, by the end of this episode, you will be up and running building your own website. So let's go ahead and jump in. We're working out of today. And as always, we're gonna log in and go ahead and update our system. So I'm gonna go ahead and log in with my user. And we're gonna go in and update. So we're gonna say sudo apt update. Go ahead and get our system going and updating so that we can start installing these packages. All right, so it looks like we have about eight packages to update today. So we will just go ahead and upgrade as well. So we're going to say sudo apt upgrade. Today's an exciting day. It's finally the day that we get WordPress on our system and it's up and running. All right, excellent. Let's go ahead and do a reboot. and give it just a couple of seconds to reboot here. I'm attached in so we won't see the full reboot here. I'll fast forward when I'm logged back in, I'll come back. All right, that was quick. So let's go ahead and start doing some of our basic installs. Now the first thing that we need to do so that we can start installing some of this is install a couple of new programs. So we're gonna do sudo bash so that we can stay logged in as root. And then I'm going to install two packages, zip and unzip. This is going to allow us to download zip files and unzip them in the directories that we need them to go into. So we're going to say apt install zip, and I'm just going to do a space here and say unzip. And we'll install these real quick. And this will allow us to download packages from WordPress we're going to be installing. So the next thing that we want to do is we actually want to go out and grab WordPress. And you're like, well, how in the world do I do that? So the first thing part of that is I want to make sure where I download it is clean. So remember that our, all of our web pages, all of our content is under the var slash www.html. So we're going to go there. We're going to say var www.html. And let's see what's in this directory. So right now we have our index.html, which was our blank page, if you remember, and we have an index.old. Well, let's go ahead and get rid of these because now we're going to build real content. So I'm going to say remove. And I'm just going to say index. And I'm going to add a star here, and I'm just going to get rid of all of it. That's a wild card that says get rid of index.anything. And now our directory should be completely empty. Now the second thing I want to do is go out and download my version of WordPress. Now you could go in and do apt install WordPress, but I found there's, there's a good bit of problems with doing this. So what we'll do is we'll go to WW, I mean, we're going to do to wget, and then we'll go out to their website to actually download it. So wget is a tool that allows us to download content out from the web, just like if it was a web browser. So I'll say wget, and I'm going to say HTTPS, and then we're going to say wordpress.org slash latest.zip. And this always keeps the latest version of WordPress that's out there. So it's an easy thing to remember to go out and grab the all the, the source for what our, our web page is going to be. All right, so it's downloaded. So let's do an ls. We'll look in the directory and we see that we have a latest.zip. There's a reason we installed that unzip file and that's because we need to unzip this file. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in and we'll actually do that. We'll say unzip and we're going to say latest.zip and we're going to do it right here into this directory which then it'll create a WordPress directory. All right, and if we do an ls here, 
you'll see we now have a WordPress directory. Now, a lot of people will install WordPress in the WordPress directory and then they'll do some configuration changes in Apache and uh, some of the active sites or available sites that are out there and point over to the WordPress directory. I don't like to do that. I like to put it in the root of HTML. You can do it either way you want. I just find that things tend to work a little bit better if you're not jumping around and you don't have to play with permissions as much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually move everything over from one place to the other. So I'm going to say move MV and I'm going to say everything in WordPress I want to move to my current folder. So I'm ba basically taking everything that's in the WordPress folder and moving it back to here. All right. So if I do an LS now, you'll see all the content that used to be in the actual WordPress folder is here now. So then I'm going to go in, I'm going to say remove, and I'm going to do that recursively, and I'm going to get rid of this WordPress folder now. All right. So now everything should be clean and it's in there. Now, one of the next pieces that I want to do is there's a folder in here and it's called WP content. And that's where all of our content really goes for when we're developing websites. So we're going to, we're going to go over to WP content and we're going to create a folder in here called upload. So right now we have plugins and themes and we have our index.php that's moved over. But I want a place where I can upload different components. So I'm going to say make directory uploads. And then I'll make sure that that's in there. And you'll see we now have an uploads folder, which is great. So let's go ahead and go back a couple of places, so back to HTML. And we're going to change our permissions. And we've done this several times, but we just put a whole lot of new files in here. So if you do an ls tag la so that we show everything, you'll see that now everything in there just about is owned by root. And that's bad. We don't want that because that means Apache can't actually make changes. Because remember, the Apache user is www-data. So what we need to do is we got to fix that the way that we have several times. So we're going to say change owner and we're going to do it recursively. And we want to change the owner to www-data. And we also want to change the group to www-data. And where do we want to do this? Well, we want this to go in var, www, HTML, and everything past that. So we're going to go ahead and hit return here. And now you should see that now www-data www owns everything in here. But the permissions aren't quite right. Some of this stuff we'll have to actually execute against, but we don't have permission to do that. So we're going to have to change the actual permissions on the files as well. So we're going to say change mod. And we're going to do this recursively as well. And then we're going to, what are we going to change that to? So we want seven so that www can read, write, and execute. We want it so our group can read, write, and execute. And then we want it so that we can only read and execute on the last one. So that number is 755. And we're going to say var www html. All right, now if we look at our permissions, we're all good to go. And that's what we want to read, write, execute, read, write, execute, read, execute. Excellent. So now we are set up. We are good to go. So if we jump over and open a web browser, we can now go to our site. All should be working and all should be good. All right, let's take a look. So if we open up our web browser, like I said, and we're back over on our desktop. And we go to our IP address. So you can put in your URL or your host name if you're out on the web. Or if you have somebody else hosting you, I would, that would probably be better because there's a database change that you'll have to make in the future if you do it by IP address. But it's not a big deal either way you go. We'll have an episode that covers how to update your database if you did it with an IP address. So... Our IP address, for me at least, is with 10.1.0.114, and I'm going to browse to there in my browser. 
And what you'll see is I have an install page and I show up on the, hey, select your language. So I'm gonna say continue for English, US. You would select whatever language and area that you're from, or at least where your website's being hosted and hit continue. And there's a few things we're going to have to know about our, our site. So we're going to have to know the database name that we created, the username, the password, and then what host it's on, and if whatever kind of prefix we want for the tables that are being created. All of that's pretty straightforward. So let's go ahead and go. And our database name is actually going to be WordPress underscore DB, and you'll see it there. Our username is WP Admin. Our password was my pass for SQL and WP, if you remember. Now, I would not use that same one. This is for our training. If you're putting something out there live on the web, do not set this up with this password because it's going to be out there posted on YouTube and that'll guarantee you be one of the passwords that people are going to try on databases in the future. Um, my database host is on the local host. It's not pointing somewhere else. And then a table prefix, a WP is fine. It doesn't matter. So we're going to go ahead and hit submit. And it says, hey, we've done it. Sparky, we, that's all right. We're ready to go. We can run installation. Now, sometimes you will get an error here. If you got an error when you got to this page, just double check your database name and your password. Make sure you didn't capitalize any of those letters or any of that sort of stuff. So we're going to jump in and we're going to run the installation. All right, that was quick. So we ran our installation, we're ready to go, and we're going to give this a site title. So I'm going to say John Wally is my site title, and I'm going to say my username is Jay Wally, and I'm going to put in a password, and um, I'm not going to use a strong password here. I'm going to use something really easy and um, I'm gonna confirm it. Now, if you're putting this live out there, this is on my internal network. It gets blown away after the training sessions. I don't use this for any live purposes other than, than going through this series on building a web server. So if you're publishing yours out on the web and it's live, please use a strong password here. Um, web, websites are attacked all the time, especially WordPress. Um, that doesn't mean they're necessarily weak if you keep them patched and up to date, but always use strong passwords. All right, so I'm going to go in here and say my email. So I'm going to say me at johnwally.com and we'll install WordPress. All right, that was pretty quick. So now the next thing that we're going to do is it says, hey, log in with your username. So we'll log in with the username we just created and a new password that we just created. So let's say Jay Wally, and we're going to log into our site. All right, we are good to go. So if you look here, we have the back end of our site now. So how do we know if our website's working? Well, if I go up to this top left-hand corner and I click John Wally, this will let me visit my site. Now it's not pretty yet and the, the default themes that come with WordPress are like all right and they can be customized but not a lot to see here but it is hosting a website this is what anybody would see now if you want to go back to your configuration in your dashboard all you have to do is click your name or the name of your site again so what it'll do is it'll take us back to the back end now, before we get back into working on our server directly, we need to do a few things actually within WordPress. So we're going to go to our tools and we're going to go to site health and we're going to look and see if we have any errors or any things that we need to fix on the back end. So here you'll see that our site health says it's good, but we haven't quite like I don't know if you can see this, but there's just a little gap there. So, and the reason why is we still have some recommended improvements. One is for security that we should remove any inactive plugins. We should remove any inactive themes. And then we have some modules missing. And um, those are probably PHP modules. So let's look at this one first. And it says, hey, we have a module DOM that's not installed. Now, you wouldn't necessarily know what module this is, but I'll tell you when we're in, we were installing the PHP extensions one of those extensions have a dom in there and we probably missed it 
it's usually in the PHP XML extension. So that's something we'll have to install. But we can't do that here. We're going to have to go back and do that at the command prompt. So here, but we have some, can we remove some of these inactive themes? So let's see if we can do that. So we go to appearance and we go to themes. And yep, we have a bunch of themes up here. So if we go to theme details, if we click on this and we hit delete, and then we say, yes, it's okay. We can remove each of these themes. So let's remove these themes that we're not using. So we'll do this for each one of them. Delete and say, okay. And then the same thing here, we'll say delete and okay. And now we have one theme, all right? We can do the same thing for our plugins. So we can come over to plugins and I don't need Hello Dolly. I can delete that. And I don't wanna use my anti-spam right now. I will eventually and we'll reinstall this. So anybody that is like cringing because of all the spam that we're gonna get, I'm not going to keep this disabled forever. It's just for now, I want to make sure that every plugin that I install is purposeful and then I activate it. And for instance, Akismet's anti-spam is a really good program, but you really, it's really a paid one. And you got to go out and get your API key and stuff like that. So I'm just going to remove it for now. All right. So if we go back to our tools and our site health, we're already much better. So we just have two left and that is, hey, we're missing a module. And the second one is your site doesn't use HTTPS. So the HTTPS is about putting in an SSL certificate for your site. We're going to do that in a later episode, so we're not going to touch this now. So you're always going to get this little error up here saying, hey, this site's not, this connection is not secure. And you're always going to get that until you install a, a certificate on your site. But we can fix this. So let's jump right back over to our command prompt and we'll go from there and we'll fix this last problem. All right, here we go. Now let me clear the screen so we can see what we're doing. And all we have to do is go in here and we're gonna say app install PHP because we're just gonna be a PHP extension and we're gonna say XML. And we're gonna say yes. And this should have fixed our last problem. So now let's go to our browser and check it out. All right, now that we have our browser back up, let's take a look. If we refresh our page, we installed. Now we may have to restart Apache. So hold on, we'll go back, we'll restart Apache and then see what happens. All right, so if we say system control Restart Apache 2. All right, so let's try it out. Excellent. So now we have no errors minus the HTTPS, which we were going to cover in another episode. So we are up and running and ready to go. Now, if you want to start playing around and looking at your site, you can go to into appearance and there are tons of ways you can make your site look really nice. So in between episodes, you can feel free to do whatever you want with themes, with plugins, with that sort of stuff. We're going to continue to move forward, but I don't want to let you slow down on what you're doing until you're waiting on the video on to tomorrow, the day after tomorrow. So what you can do is say add new for themes. And there's tons and tons and tons of themes out there, as you can see, that make your site look in all different ways. Um, you can also do the same with plugins, and there's literally hundreds and th thousands of plugins that you could use to make your site look and act in different ways as well. So feel fr free to play around, get your content together, play with graphics, those type of things. And then when we jump in next, at the next episode on episode six, we're going to start playing with firewalls and locking this down and really making this a robust site. So that's it. You have an up and running website. We have a couple of episodes left where we'll talk about our certificates and we'll talk about how to harden it with firewalls. But for the most part, you're up and running. You have a web server. I would ask if you've liked these videos, if you could put comments behind, like the videos, and always if you subscribe and hit that little bell, you'll be notified anytime new videos are coming out. Thank you and you have a great evening.